Everybody knows the old normal has gone. That's how the most recent paper from our next guest starts his most recent global investment roadmap monthly report. Robin Griffiths is head of multi-asset research at ECU Group and he joins us now. Mr. Moore, Robin, good to talk to you again. That's a very mm. big picture comment. Yes. Um, just explain to us where we are big picture because you highlight the fact that we've got an expensive bond market yeah. and we are expensive in the equity markets and that tension can't yeah. continue. It can't. They're probably both wrong. Uh, bonds seem to be discounting a great depression and equity is a great boom ahead and clearly that's mutually exclusive. One of the clearest things that highlights the new normal is for decades in the past, very few equities had a greater yield than the government bonds, roughly 5%. Now it's 60% of equities have a greater yield than Treasury bonds or US, UK gilts. That's, that's the new normal. And it's really weird. I mean, we don't know how to live with zero or negative interest rates. It's never happened before in history. And that trend is still with us, basically. That is the new normal. And there's no sign that we're going to go to very strongly rising interest rates anytime soon. Even if the Fed has a little hike in, say, December, that's not the trend. Everyone else is still heading down into negative territory. Is there an indication, do you think, talking about the bond markets and where interest rates are going, that it's more likely we'll see a deflationary environment for those economies that can't um, sustain higher rates? Uh, I think that's correct. Those economies like Russia that rely on ex basically selling commodities, in their case oil and gas, are in depression right now. But we're sufficiently optimistic to think that the world economy will cool down, but there won't be a global recession. Parts of it will be obviously recessionary, but everyone else will just have a very slow, possibly subpar growth rate, 1%, some sort of number like that. We'll survive that. But if we overpay for equities, uh, we'll be very disappointed in the performance we get. But so long as the yield argument contains, then yeah. in that case you can contain the recent highs we've got. I mean, let's, let's just bring up the S&P 500 yes. as, a, as a good example yeah. where uh, we've got these markets moving ahead. Yes, you, you rightly say that the US economy is probably the only economy that could sustain a little bit of a rise in interest rates. Yeah. So there is a little bit more heat there than would otherwise be the case. Yes. Explain what's going on there. Well, uh, it, it, according to my macro analysis, the secular trend is not in fact up for the S&P, even though it is above the 2000 high. Um, but they've got the strongest relative economy in the Western world. The stocks that used to be called the backbone of the American economy, General Electric, General Motors, IBM, Walmart, they're quite obviously in a bear market. But there are about eight giant market cap stocks like Google and all these high-tech ones, and they've been what's holding the index up. But you can't have in a portfolio only of these, and they're all on extremely high multiples. Amazon is a classic one. The multiple isn't 800 anymore, but it is over 300. And that isn't a good level to buy anything at, even though it's a super business. So um, according to me, we're likely to see a profit taking at least back to the 200 day moving average on this chart. Right, that would be the red line here. Yeah. And that kicks in just over the 2000 level. In yeah. fact, well, I think 2090 or something. Yeah, I, uh, I so think we could see that this calendar year. That's not much of a drawback. We've got 2,000 below there, the big number, which yeah. would be the previous uh, big low that we saw yes. on the 27th of June. And in the year 2017, I think we'll see at least that with a risk that will go lower. A lot depends on what a new president's policies are. But my opinion is whoever wins the election, whoever wins, is going to preside over a cooling economy and a bearish phase in the market. The seventh year of the decade is traditionally the one with the, where the pain is taken. We've been sort of losing momentum for about over a year now, but with some strength in certain stocks. But you say it's a new normal. September's normally a bad month yes. in the equity markets, and it hasn't been. It hasn't that been. looks like, to me, the new normal. Uh, so how can we be so well, sure the, that... the part that's overriding the shorter-term cycles, which are definitely being overridden, is government intervention. It, not just in America, but as, in other markets too. The government is not only the biggest holder of bonds making the prices, particularly in Japan, 80 of all the stocks in the Nikkei index, the government's now the biggest shareholder. So governments are intervening in the markets to stop them doing what capitalist processes would normally have achieved. They've broken the capital asset pricing model. There's no doubt about that. 
Let's talk about the FTSE 100 yeah. uh, and what's going on here. Um, it's been well headlined in the last day or so. We've seen yeah. new intraday record highs, a yes. little bit of a pullback subsequently. Yeah. Uh, much of that has been, we've spoken about this a number of people, the, the weak pound yes. has driven up some of these because it's export driven. Absolutely. What in my, in my product, I look at global assets. So the currency is very important. The chart of the actual FTSE looks great. It's clearly in an uptrend. But the downtrend in sterling is overwhelmingly more powerful. It's at a 30-year low. So the brutal truth is, even with FTSE at these exciting levels, all British assets are worth less now than they were before Brexit, or indeed at the beginning of the year. If you're buying them in another currency, if you come in, well, you would have been better off just sitting on your yen right. than, than owning okay. anything in England, really, right. or the dollar, basically. Right. We're not the weakest currency uh, on the planet, but it, 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 we are at a 30-year low, and that's the dominant thing. Mm -hmm. um, our market is not particularly expensive, but it is now overbought in the short term. Your RSI indicator is up at a, a top level. Some sort of pullback, at least to your sustainable moving average trend line, is very likely. So right now, I would be more inclined to take profits than not. Uh, some of the mining stocks have had fantastic rises, and that alone will prompt a little bit of profit taking, even though the longer term outlook for them is quite good. And the same with the oil stocks, because they're incredibly bombed out original levels. Uh, just now, as I'd take risk off the table. Right. Um, just going back to the moving averages, bring yeah. the chart back up again. You were yeah. talking about the 200 day moving average of yes. the S&P 500. Here is the 200 day moving. Are you suggesting yeah. we could see the FTSE down there or uh, further on? Or, or certainly your 100 day moving average, I think, will be tested. And then with the risk of it going to the 200 day. Mm -hmm. It's a question of if this, then that. If you break your 200 day line, we'll be looking at the bottom of the chart again, basically. Yeah. OK, and that's into next year. That is your... Next year is the maximum risk for a, what I would call a bear market a pattern on the charts yeah. definitely uh, what equity markets are good uh, a good buy at the moment my top favorite uh, long term is is India um, I've been a fan of it ever since mr. Modi was was elected because it's India and everything, nothing happens quickly, uh, the market had an initial euphoric rally and then got disappointed he's done nothing. Right. Well, he's now been there long enough and he is doing all the right things. We're clearly in a bull market. Mm. We've got golden crosses of all the moving averages, but we've rallied back to the old all-time high. And because, for no other reason than that, we expect a bit of a consolidation. We work off the overbought situation. We've already cut back through the short-term moving average. You're certainly going to test the 100. I don't think you will fall back to the 200 day moving average. It's more likely to go sideways and the 200 will catch up. But I'm then predicting we will break the all time high. And this is the one market I can close my eyes and say this is going up and up and up and up. They don't import or export very much of anything except oil. The oil price being 40 gallons uh, dollars a barrel off the high is a benefit to them. They're the fastest growing major economy on the planet. And when we talk about baby boomers and demographics, nobody's demographics look half as good as India's, really. It's a slam dunk for me is the long term buy. Mm. Um, you, you mentioned sterling in the context of yeah. the FTSE 100. Let me just bring up um, yeah. a chart of uh, sterling against the US dollar. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about this to clients, yes. and they've been really interested to find out where the likely move is out from. What has been this um, this box that we've got here, which yes. was established um, yeah. after the, um, the, the the Brexit yes. vote or the referendum? Yes. Um, what are your thoughts here? Clearly, uh, this is a daily chart. Clearly, we've yeah. got this drop here. You're talking there about 30 or 30 yeah. odd year low at the moment, and we continue to, to see a building of that. Yes. Um, um, uh, where, where I don't is want it to try and face both ways at once, but basically the, the trend is negative. I think we're going to get worse before we get better. In the incredibly short time, though, we're oversold. If we ratted back to the very bottom of that box shape, which is a little bit higher, yeah. I don't think it would go any further than that. But a little tiny rally back to that mm -hmm. before coming lower, is it? I'm really seeing the, the trend is steep negative for now. Well, although I don't think our economy is in bad shape and I'm optimistic about a Brexit deal w working out favourably and being out in the long run is good for us, we've got to go through pain before we get to all of that. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the ways to, yeah. to measure the, 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 um, the amount that we could well come out of the box yeah. is by looking at the way we went into yes, it. Yes, absolutely. And if you do project that down, that goes down yeah. to 115. Do you feel happy I do. I feel happy with four, I expect to see 115 at some stage. 
Yeah, probably next year. Right, OK, so it's yeah. all tied in with the same move in the market. It, it is. About the I price. think you'll see quite a lot of things unravel next year. Mm -hmm. We've been living in a deluded world that uh, we know there's an, an, a reset needed, mm -hmm. but we don't know when it's going to happen. A growing number of very famous commentators uh, are adding their voice, this must end in tears at some point. And I believe that. I sincerely do believe that. So I just don't want to be taking risk now. It, it will come in one day and find, like we did in 1987, oh, how did that happen? We lost 20% just like that. Yeah. A flash crash is really quite likely. It's quite, quite cathartic, I'd have thought. Cathartic, was, yes. Which I think would be quite... Um, in, in that sort of um, mode, yes. um, quite often clients will come to us and say, well, how about gold? Because yes. that is quite often the, the, the choice yeah. when you get a storm in I'm the I'm a long-term bull of gold. It's one of my personal biggest positions. But in the short term, as you've got your wedge shape there on the chart, it was quite obvious we were going to we hit resistance between 1380 and 1400. Mm -hmm. We were going to have a pullback, and we're in it now. Um, and I think it's going to get into a range between 1200 and 1250. We're not quite there yet. Yet, but it's, we're going there. But it won't break below uh, but that lower 1,200. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I would add to holdings. I think it's got, you see some of the gold mining stocks put on two to three hundred percent very quickly. That's bound to produce profit taking, and this is part of the uh, the wobble, as it were. Uh, but the trend for gold, even in dollars, is now a bull market. And in every other currency, it's been a bull market for years anyway. In sterling, it's a fantastically good investment. So uh, don't lose hope. Uh, as the first rally in gold shares was in the majors, we were talking Barrick, Agnico, we, the second one will s enjoy them rallying again and bringing some smaller gold mines. Mm -hmm. And then down the road, we're going to get the little baby ones much later in the day. Mm -hmm. So on breaking 1380 next time up, you'll go to 1900. Right, I was going to ask you about yeah. an upside target. Is yeah. that all, that's all connected with the turbulence next year? I, I think we'll see it next year uh, to hedge the turbulent risk, mm. exactly. Yeah. OK, yeah. well, let's, let's, let's end then and, and, and bring it all together. Yeah. We've spoken about potential levels. Yeah. It is so very difficult, as we've highlighted, the fact to try and time these things yes. because of the September-October argu argument thing. Yeah. What's your best case for your situation to, to work out in terms of timing? In terms of timing now, at the top of the rallies we've just had, I would what's called rebalance the portfolio, take some profits where we've got them, certainly in sterling terms, uh, hold a little more cash deliberately. I know you don't get a return on it, but it keeps your options open to buy as cheaper when you get it. And actually, if you've got a portfolio with gilts or bonds in it, slightly increase the weighting of that for now. And then on a dip next year, we'll not only be able to go back into equities bigger, we will be buying commodity-related equities then, not now, but then, because the commodity market's been in a secular downtrend for ages, and it's, it's been a big daddy of a one. And we've had a low and a rally. We're likely to retest that low, and that's the bottom. And then they'll, they, you can lock them away and make a fortune on them. Good. OK, we'll have you back in maybe this time next yeah. year. We can, we can take stock of that. Robin, thanks indeed. In the meanwhile, Robin Griffiths there from ECU Group with his thoughts uh, for the next couple of months and also for 2017.